Hi guys, happy Sunday with Satan. <laughs> of course. So, we're gonna go into the clan of Tubal Cain. And this is where it gets really interesting and very controversial. So, I really like it, I love it, I think it's amazing, and it's incredible that all these people backfire on Robert Cochran. But he did have one good thing to say about Wicca and Gerald Gardner, and it, that was, you know, he created Wicca to suit his uh, degenerate uh, desires, which are. Yeah, I mean, just look up degenerate. So, pretty disgusting, if you ask me. But, so the clan of Chibacane, or the Royal Windsor Coven, um, as it was sometimes been called, it is the name, obviously, of the traditional witchcraft group founded by the late Robert Cochran, 1931 to 1966. Now, in the early 1960s. So, yeah. Mm. I've seen so many claims about the uh, clan of Chupacane going back like thousands of years. No, not hardly. So he was one of the most fascinating, enigmatic, and controversial figures of the modern craft revival. He wrote no books and only a handful of articles in obscure magazines. So most of what we know about Cochrane's beliefs and practices comes from a series of letters written to several correspondents and the personal recollections of those he worked with. Yeah, and it's insane, and it just gets even more insane. So over 40 years after his uh, premature death, debate still rages as to whether he was a genuine hereditary witch, as he claimed, no, I don't think so, or a suader, or, a, you know, a, a poseur, a poser, who invented his own tradition. He tr invented his own tradition, it's obvious. It was not there before him. He was a, uh, trying to, yeah, he took craft beliefs and he kind of revised them to fit his modern day thinking which yeah no <laughs> don't like it oh uh, where'd I go I don't know where I went so okay so most of what we know about Cochran's I read that <clears throat> okay here we go now, Robert Cochran was born into a large family of eight children living in West London, so he stated that he lived in poverty in a slum, and the comment upset his family, as in fact it was a respectable working class area of the capital between Hammersmith and Shepherd's Bush. So, Cochran may in fact have been referring to a period uh, in his early life as an art student when he followed a bohemian lifestyle and lived in squats some of the, well, some of his um, other relatives lived in the Midlands and some em emigrated to Australia. So Cochrane lived in London throughout his childhood and in the Second World War, he experienced the Blitz when every night for several months, the German um, Luftwaffe bombed the city. By his own admission, he was a bit of a tearaway when he was young and had a violent temper that frequently got him into trouble with his peers. <laughs> it just gets even better and better. Now, in a letter to one of his correspondents, he admits that as a young man, he was a threat to all of those around him. He added that his broken nose and scarred face uh, were a lasting testimony to a violent period in his life. Self-inflicted? Why? So the on this only ended when he met a girl. Then he later married. Um, Cochran also re er, served in the army in the early 1950s, doing his then compulsory two years of national service. Um, but unfortunately, military life does not seem to have suited Cochran because he was about, or he was absent without leave. Wouldn't he have to go back? And wouldn't they like drag him back by the feet? Right, that's what happens today. As a result, he was sentenced to 90 days imprisonment, oh, in a military prison, mm, at Colchester in Essex. Alright, his father, who had, uh, oh, served in the Colds, what? Colds Run Guards, and was mentioned um, in dispatches during the Battle of the Somme during the First? World War was not impressed. Cochrane spent his early working life as a blacksmith working for a London transport in, in a foundry, which would be a factory right now. So, 
Um, this had been cited as the reason why Cochrane called his coven the clan of Tubal Cain after the biblical first smith. Now, in the Industrial Revolution, many of the old iron masters called their foundries either after Tubal Cain or the old Roman god of smithcraft and fire Vulcan. So, in fact, Cochrane had more esoteric reasons for choosing that particular name. Now, in the Old Testament, the blacksmith and hunter Tubal Cain is said to have descended from Cain, the first murderer. What? It, yeah, we don't know that for sure. Um, agriculturist, agriculturalist, <laughs> and city builder, who, um, you know, who is also credited with inventing weights and measures. Is that true, though? Don't know. So, in esoteric traditions, Cain was supposed to have been the result of a forbidden uh, liaison. I love that word, liaison, between Eve and Samael, Lucifer. So, Tubal Cain was also a very significant figure in esoteric Freemasonry. Uh, yeah, my family, we have we are rooted in the Freemasons, so we have a lot of Freemasons in our family, and um, they, I think it's just stupid, it's really stupid, um, because if my dad, they would not, you know, go to him because he didn't have enough money. It's all about money with Freemasons, so I just blow them off because it's just stupid. And to dismiss my dad, because they didn't have enough money, so he could become, you know, a, a Freemason, uh, stupid. Dumbest stuff I've ever heard of. Um, so, and this may also link with traditional witchcraft, as it has been suggested that they influenced each other. Yeah, I don't know. Later, Robert Cochran and his new wife worked as bargies on the narrow boats that transported coal and other goods along the canals. I about said carnals. Canals in the Midlands. So they nursed one of the narrow boat owners through an illness, and as a result were accepted into the closely knit community. So because of their kindness, Cochrane learned about the custom and folklore of his new friends. He later claimed that traces of the old faith could be found in the symbols used in the colorful folk art that uh, decorated the boats. So uh, these included designs such as the Rose and Castle, and both of these symbols are featured prominently in the rituals of Cochrane's form of the craft. In 1997, writer Tony Steele provided a possible confirmation, possible, possible confirmation <laughs> um, of Cochrane's belief that had been, oh, that the boat people were connected with witchcraft. So Steele claimed contacts among certain families who traversed um, the Trent and Mackey Canal and were popularly known as water witches. Okay, makes sense. A little bit. So two of these families were the kings of the Hertfordshire and the grooms of uh, Bingham. 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 So who both later gave up the boats and went into the road um, hulge business. So Steele specifically mentions the paintings of sun wheels, um, a circle with six boats, which is the traditional um, symbol of, yeah, um, well, in Buka and Rose, um, that would be, yeah. A symbol of um, the craft. So, on the narrow, yeah, and then these symbols were found all over the narrow boats. Now he claims that it is a symbol that has a special significance in traditional witchcraft. It is possible that Conquer first learnt about the craft while living in the narrow boat community, or he could have been um, discovered it through reading Robert Graves' seminal study of ancient British mythology and poetry. Now the White Goddess in. 1959, a book that remained an important influence on him throughout his life. In fact, the two men actually exchanged correspondence. So, according to one of Cochrane's two men, wait, according to one of Cochrane's aunts, his first, he first became interested in witchcraft after he attempted to take, after he att uh, attempted to talk at the Society of uh, psychical research in Kensington. So, there he met up with various people, uh, got very interested in the craft, and the rest is history. I don't like... He, I, I like his attack on Gerald Gardner. <laughs> Who doesn't? And I like his, uh, his uh, radical, like, blurts, which seem like psychotic bursts to me, because I've experienced this myself. Um, yeah, I just think that they're very cool, especially when they're aimed at Gerald Gardner, because I honestly do not care for Gerald Gardner whatsoever. 
ridiculously disgusting man. But also Cochrane was too. I don't know how the uh, clan of Tubacane actually, you know, stays alive. But whatever. All right, where'd I go? Okay. I do not know where I went whatsoever. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, by the beginning of the 1960s, Robert Cochran was living with his wife and son, together with a pet, Mina Bird, and a cat, Madame Jinxie. Madame Jinxie. Who cares about his animals and his familiar spirit, Tompkins? Who cares about his sp familiar sp spirit either? On a council housing estate just outside Slow in uh, Berkshire. So it was owned by um, an old LLC or London Country Council Authority and was designed to take the overspill from the capital. Cochrane claimed it was on the site of a former witch's meeting ground, and it was not near. Oh, it was not far from not far from uh, Burnham, Burnham beaches, where his own coven used to meet. So he was obviously not happy living there, as in one of his letters he sarcastically described the other inhabitants of the estate as the biggest load of monkeys there have been trained since the ark <laughs> he, he laments uh the fact that he and his wife found it difficult to astrally, astrally travel as the group mind of the locals was hindering them so at that time cochran was working in an office as a typographical uh draughtsman draught, draughtsman draughtsman this too is uh causing him problems. He did not like working indoors, and he told his friends that he would uh, rather work behind a plow. He seems like a really ungrateful person. He seemed like a very ungrateful child. So, yeah, whatever. In front of the plow, but, yeah, behind it, whatever. But the clan of Duke Cain seems to have been founded in the early 1960s and was the second group Robert Cochran had started. The first one broke up when one member died and Cochran fell out with another. So, so uh, about by 1962 or 1963, Cochran had established another working group consisting of factory workers and a school teacher, possibly Ronald Chalky White, who later found the Regency, founded the Regency. Now, an artist and an engineer, Evan John Jones, Cochran was the coven's devil or magister, and his wife acted as the maiden, or the maiden seer. So Cochran met one of the members, Ronald M M Milland White, 1928 to 1998. After he had answered an advertisement, Cochran had placed in the Manchester Guardian requesting contact with people interested in Robert Graves, the White Goddess. Oh boy, a very different, very different man. It's very strange. Um, where'd I go? So, um, though White was introduced to George Arthur Standard, aka Winter, um, who was working as the manager of um, betting shop near the King's Cross Railroad sta Railway Station um, in Central London, he joined the Coven as its summoner. However, Robert Cochran may have been involved with other traditional or hereditary witches before he found he found the clan of Jubal Cain. I don't believe it. <laughs> I really don't. I don't believe anything that man says. Uh, okay, where'd I go? Oh god, where did I go, guys? Okay, so however Robert Cochran may have been involved, okay, yeah, whatever we all know that. So an um, an informant who wishes to remain, anon uh, remain anonymous has told this writer that in the early 1960s he met Cochran on several occasions. This was allegedly at Old Craft Meads in Cheshire, near the border of uh, Derbysh Derbyshire, and in the um, Shropshire countryside. So those present recognized in Cochran. A distinctive state of awaking, awakingness associated with somebody who was um, born hereditary, which I don't think anybody's born hereditary at all. You have to work at it. Unfortunately, um, my informant, he said, says Cochran was often impatient at the progress of the teachings that he was given and did not attempt any further meetings. However, he believed Cochran took some of the concepts of ritual and beliefs from the meets he attended 
and later developed them in his own way. With regard to Cochrane's alleged, alleged background in the old craft, even John, um, Evan John Jones believed that he owed allegiance and other more senior members from when they had joined his own authority. Weird, weird man. I do not care for him. But whatever. It's part of our history. Okay, where'd I go? Okay, so it is true that Cochrane seems to have had some inside knowledge. Possibly. Um, about the famous Long Campton witches in War Warwickshire belonging to the old coven in England. Oldest coven in England. So, John uh, Jones also believed that in his travels around the country, Cochrane may have encountered some old boys or old-style witches. For instance, he told Jones about a network of six witch covens who met at special places along the ancient green roads or prehistoric trackways that crossed southern England from Wales to East Anglia. So, these later became the Drover, Drover's Roads along with herds of cattle and flocks of sheep were driven, so from the countryside to the livestock markets in the largest cities and towns. Researchers in modern earth mysteries believe the f tracks, or the trackways, also follow the routes of the lays, spirit paths, or landscape alignments between ancient sites. So there's a long tradition of witches meeting at such places and ta or tapping into the natural energy that flows along them for magical purposes. So it is possible in these old witch clans exist if there that if these old witch clans existed that there they were the higher authority. So that Cochrane referred to, uh, learnt from, and to whom he owed um, ultimate allegiance as his elders in the craft. So we're gonna leave off there. I think that's enough of Cochrane for right now. <laughs> I I honestly I can't deal with. It. Uh, him <laughs> his teachings I just think are ridiculous but I mean but again I feel sorry I, I take that back if it works for you if it works for people go for it okay um now let's see it's really hard to bookmark like certain pages it's just really weird to, to, to like bookmark certain pages and things. So now I know at least we're in Tubalcane, so that helps a whole little bit. <laughs> All right, so Cochrane first came into the public prominence. All right, if I can even write. Sorry, guys, I have to write this down or I will forget. Uh, everything, <laughs> everything that I write down. So yes, I need sticky notes, but if I did have sticky notes, they would be literally all over here, and I would not be able to see the computer. So, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about Robert Cochran? Didn't he kill himself? I think so. I think so. But, yeah. Very different kind of guy. Very different kind of guy. I mean, just so much different. I don't know. It's just very odd. Some of his stuff, pretty odd. But I mean, I love Tubal Cain. I love you know the whole um, <laughs> bloodline to Cain, and yeah, I just kind of bypass Tubal Cain and just straight to Cain. So I just think it's more amazing. It's 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 richer. It's deeper, and you don't have to actually like think. Okay, is is he telling the truth or did he just make this whole up? So I mean, if you guys have read uh, that, but what am I reading again? The Children of Cain. Yeah, very good book, and I highly recommend it, definitely for you guys. So, but yeah, I just yeah, I I have my opinions, and I just I won't state all of them here right now. So, <laughs> all right, guys, um, I love you all very much. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, definitely. Happy Sunday, with Satan. All the way from well, all my love, all the way from Venus, <laughs> all the way back down. And I will see you guys tomorrow. So thank you guys for being amazing people. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.